Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to give you hope and it is gonna show you exactly what you can plant still in the middle of September. Now, we are in zone five slash six here in Northern Indiana. So if you're a little bit south, then you can uh, extend it by a couple of weeks. If you're a little bit north, you can subtract or truncate it by a couple of weeks. Uh, but for the most part, there is still time. Do not feel like the season is over, my friends, because it is not. So the first thing we have to understand is that uh, the time for the fruit producing things is over. Uh, like the tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and squash and uh, the pumpkins and all of that kind of stuff. That uh, is in the rear view mirror for this season, my friends. So hopefully you got that in while it was good. But for the stuff where we eat the leaves or the shoots or maybe even the roots, then there's still time. Uh, so I'm going to go through a number of things that I uh, have planted and do plant at this time things that you still can plant uh, but before i get into it i want you to put in the comments where you are at and then what you have recently planted so that other people can read through the comments and go oh this person's in pennsylvania or oh they're in florida or something and they just planted this so if you have experience with it put it in the comments for the other people to utilize okay this is how we help each other so uh, the first thing that we want to understand is that in the planting in middle of September is that we don't have to um, wait until the thing is full grown. So you want to be planting things that you can eat at any stage along the way. Now, this is the most important. So if you look on the pack and it says, oh, 55 days till harvest. Well, I guess I can't plant that. No, not at all, guys. So here's some things that you can eat at any stage along the way. All right. I just picked through a bunch of my seeds. These are all things I would still plant in zone five, six, middle of September. But don't mess around. You better get on it. So uh, the lettuces, guys, these are super fast and uh, delicious, especially the Landis winter. Uh, I've been trying this the past couple of years and it's very, very cold hardy. OK, so you can still plant that by seed. No problem. And uh, things like the bok choy, tiny little bok choys, you can still plant. Any The Merlot uh, lettuce, yes, I'm going to plant that. You can even plant the uh, like wasabi radishes. Um, those are still going to be good. Now, they're not going to grow into the full-size pungent ones, but that's fine. You can eat them as baby greens, okay? Now, you can still plant the collard greens. Collard greens are remarkably cold hardy. I mean, remarkably. Uh, and so they, uh, you can plant them and yes, they will be baby greens, but that's all right. Don't think they're going to be big four foot plants like the ones out there now. Uh, but you don't need that. Same thing with the, um, ca uh, the kale, the dinosaur kale, you can plant it, but here's what you want to do guys. When, when I say baby greens, you want to almost treat it like microgreens, but it's not, it, you'll get much more growth out of it than that, but you want to treat it. Uh, you, you want to sow them. Uh, direct sow them, of course. Don't transplant anything at this point unless you're in zones 8 and above or whatever, uh, or maybe 7. But um, sow it directly and sow it nice and thick, okay? So you sow them like five times thicker than you normally would if you were going to plant them out uh, for full season because they're not going to have all that time to grow up and crowd each other out. So uh, they're not going to be like microgreens, but they'll be like in between micro and adult. So uh, the, the kale is good for that. Now, also the beets, guys, you're not going to get huge honking full size beets. Uh, um, some of you might, but for the most part, you'll get baby beets, but they'll still be delicious, guys. Saute them, steam them, uh, put a little bit of honey on them, put a little bit of thyme in there with it. But guys, the Solyndra beets are phenomenal. I, I just can't even, I mean, this is my first year, I think, growing them. And uh, they have been incredible, super sweet. I've been juicing them. Uh, now these, the bull's blood, very good, very nutritious, but they taste like beets, which is, they taste like earth kind of. But these Solyndra beets are off the charts, guys. Super sweet, you can eat them raw. So you can plant them when they're little babies, not a problem. Another thing is gonna be Chinese cabbage. We got our adult Chinese cabbage out there just waiting to make a huge batch of kimchi. But you can grow, Chinese cabbage and eat them as a salad green, guys. They're like the most incredible. If you make it with a little uh, miso, ginger, uh, honey, and soy sauce type uh, 
uh, dressing and drizzle it over it. Eat it raw, guy. It is so good, my friends. Another one is the daikon radish. Now, we're going to combine these two here in a little bit, uh, in about another month, and make some uh, kimchi out of it. But these are great for sautéing and stir-frying and very cold-hearty as well. And you can let these go all winter or, or into the fall and into the winter and uh, they will self-terminate and then they will leave huge gaping holes in the earth. Uh, and they're a really good cover crop is what I'm trying to say. So uh, another thing is going to be the radishes, guys. You can plant these little baby globe radishes, no problem, because uh, they take 25 days, which these are the fastest of all things to produce. Uh, so these are still nice and good and fiery. Uh, Komatsuna, I've got some out there that is growing really well and it's growing right next to the Shijimisa, which is actually a combination, it's a, a, a bread uh, from the Komatsuna and the bok choy. The Shijimisa is delicious spinach substitute. I'm never growing spinach again because it's too finicky, but this stuff, the Shijimisa, grows really well in the heat or the cold. I mean really cold. It can get snowed on and everything. So I've been loving this stuff the past couple seasons. And uh, I've been making it in stir fries. It's a super nice, hearty green. And um, so is the Komatsuna, but it, just not as much. Not as much as this, because it's uh, uh, just delicious. And so another thing you can do is the turnips. Yes, the Vikings love the turnips, guys, because they're extraordinarily cold hardy and they last a long time once harvested, if stored properly. So you can plant the turnips still. Uh, even though it says 55 days to maturity, you go, your last frost is uh, only about 25 days away, uh, that's not going to work. Yes, it will, because they're talking about full size. So we're just going to sprinkle them thickly, and we're going to do baby turnips, which they're going to be more tender anyways, guys, so it doesn't even matter. Now, here's a couple of things, some honorable mention. It's too late to plant peas in most zones, uh, so even the, even the dwarf peas is going to take too long. But you can plant them, and eat their tendrils so plant them super close together i mean you can plant them almost touching each other at this point and they will sprout up and they will be growing and you can just cut the growing tendril off of the pea and uh eat that like uh, like a um i mean that's how we do it in microgreens when we're growing peas so guys you can still plant peas but you're not going to get the full size peas you are going to get some delicious succulent tender tendrils and the tendrils taste exactly like the peas so you can put those into a salad uh, into a juice into a blend whatever it is we're just putting the whole garden into the blend we're just doing all kinds of good stuff right now so here's here's a, a thing that you might oh yeah cilantro you still got time to plant some cilantro guys don't mess around though but it is quite whole cold hardy so um, that's pretty cool now, here is something that I want to show you that uh, now is the time to, you can fall sow things like the green onions, guys. These are king green onions, real big and thick and delicious ones. Now is the time actually to sow these uh, because just naturally th they would have been sown, sowing themselves about a few weeks ago. Uh, so you can still plant them and they will be for next year. You might still get a little bit of growth. This, I mean, you'll get some growth this year, but they'll be for next year. They'll come back in the spring. Now, another thing that you can do is you can plant some of the uh, things like the calendula, guys. The calendulas are amazing pest repellents. I have these things all over the place in the garden. That's why this year I didn't have to use any of the pesticide, the J-Dom stuff. None of that, guys, because everything, there were some holes in the leaves, yeah, but that's just, that's a casualty of war, so that's not a problem uh, because we've got things like the... Um, calendulas, the nasturtiums, the marigolds all throughout the garden, and the green onions all throughout the garden. Uh, so you can take them and plant them now. You might get a little bit of growth, but even if the seeds, so the next couple things I'm gonna show you, even if just the seeds sit in the soil, cold, wet, freezing soil all winter long, they will sprout in the springtime. It's magnificent, it's incredible, guys, when you observe this. So you can take things like native wildflowers, that are native to your area, you can take them and plant them now. Plant the seeds out now, like the Coreopsis. I've had them. You plant them in the fall, like right now. Uh, you can plant the um, calendulas right now. Also, the coxcomb, you can plant them right now. And don't even worry about them. They're not going to sprout now, but they will sprout in the springtime. Some of them, most of them. And guys, these coxcomb are super beautiful. And uh, everybody is asking about these things. Enormous. This is an Indiana giant coxcomb. So there you go, guys. I tried to give it to you as fast as possible and as concise. So uh, there you go. That's everything that you need. 
uh, to plant in your zone. So if you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up and share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge. And I will see you guys right here every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time for a live Q&A. If you have questions that aren't getting answered, you can ask me. And if I know, then I will tell you, okay? And right now is the ideal time to begin putting down the base fertilizer for next year. So I'll direct you to this video here so that you can find out exactly how to do that.